Gary, good afternoon. Great to see you. Thanks, mate. You good? Yeah, good, thank you. Obviously, you know, immense disappointment off the back of the West Ham result. Have you seen a, a positive reaction, as you'd expect, from the players in training? Yeah, lads have, lads have got back to work, as, as they always do. I think, um, yeah, West Ham game was a huge disappointment for us. Um, yeah, the, the nature of the goals, the... Um, how early the, the game had swung in their favour. Um, yeah, so it was, a, it was a disappointing afternoon, but yeah, we, we understand that in, in the Premier League we're, we're, we're going to lose some football matches, so we need to find a way to respond. And yeah, what a better way than having two, three days to prepare for, a, for another big game that we, we need to be ready to, to go away from home again and, and, and show our resilient side and, uh, and make sure we pick up some more points. As one of the key positives of your recent run been the way you have responded to disappointments against Arsenal you won the next game you lose to Villa you win the next game you lose to Brighton you win the next game are you gonna to have to show those type of characteristics once again that they've been key all season of course it doesn't always you don't always respond as quickly as you've just said there some of our some of our difficult spells have gone on longer but the lads the lads are always giving absolutely everything to make sure we respond. It's a, the nature of the Premier League, especially at the end of it that we are, the, the bottom end of the Premier League. There are going to be some afternoons where, um, yeah, you don't come out on top, but that, that cannot change your approach and your hunger and your desire to, to go again in the, in the following fixture. So, um, yeah, lads, lads are fine. We understand that um, we're getting close to the end of the season and we, we still need to make sure we put some more points on the board to... Um, to secure what would be yeah a big achievement for us. The relegation battle in the Premier League changes every single week with results and performances from the eight or nine teams that are, are in the fight. Were you watching Leeds Leicester last night? Were you aware of it, or do you just completely switch off? Yeah, no, I had a couple of screens going in the office. Just so a couple. We had, I had yeah, we had the Leeds Leicester game on while I was still preparing some stuff for for Southampton. So um, yeah, had it on in the office late last night, and yeah, just watching. Obviously, Leeds, who we play, we face on um, on Sunday, and yeah, obviously interested in the outcome and, and how the teams were going about it. So um, yeah, it was on in the office. Do you know how many points you're going to need? I did a show the other day. Thirty three point eight is what you need based on the last five Premier League seasons. Twenty nine kept you up one season. Thirty six was what you needed another season. So just under thirty four. You're on thirty three. Does it feel like one more win? Would be enough? Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I can imagine um, a team being relegated with 36 this season. I think it's possible. So, um, yeah, we won't be setting, definitely won't be setting 36 as our goal. Um, not that we'll set a points tally, but yeah, 36 would, would not be something that I was aiming for in my mind. Um, aiming to leave St Mary's on Thursday with 36, hopefully, um, and then we'll We'll address the next game after that, see where we are. But um, yeah, that's the mentality we've taken from the start. I think obviously the closer to the end you get when there's a couple or a few games left, it becomes clear what may be needed and may not. But at this point, so many permutations still that we um, yeah, we focus purely on, on trying to win the next game still. You talk about being in your study with a couple of screens on, one with Leeds, Leicester, one with Southampton. What's your analysis of them shown? And how big a challenge will this game be? Yeah, it'll be a big challenge. They've made big improvements since, um, yeah, since the new new head coach took over. So, yeah, they're, they're, they've improved. They're um, they're not really in relegation form since he's he's taken the job. I think they're nine points from nine games. Um, so a decent return, um, high energy, yeah, front foot, um, aggressive. Um, had some good results. Fantastic performance at Arsenal and result. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's. Not like we're going to a team that are losing every week and uh, have been rooted to the bottom of the table because they're in terrible form. They're um, they're putting in some real good performances, picking up some good results. So um, yeah, it'll be a real tough test if if anyone is in any doubt. And um, yeah, I can assure them it'll be a really tough game for us on on Thursday. I know Southampton fans don't see Bournemouth as a rivalry, but you certainly know their main rivalry, having played for Portsmouth for a number of years. What do you remember about those encounters and those matches because they are fierce? Yeah, they, they were fierce. Yeah, they, they still are fierce, I guess. I think um, my first ever reserve game because we used to have reserve teams back then was against Southampton for Portsmouth at Haven't Waterlooville and there was about 
3,000 fans in. I was only 15 playing right midfield uh, against Francis Bernali. Um, and as soon as I tried to run him behind him from kickoff, he smashed me in the face with a cast on his arm. <laughs> and I thought, oh, yeah, this is... So I've come straight from maths, like just finished maths, gone to play for Portsmouth Reserves and got a cast smashed in my face by a... So I was like, oh, that's what this is what senior football is going to be like. Um, and that was just a reserve game. So, yeah, there was some... Yeah, there were some fierce games between Portsmouth and Southampton and obviously a real memorable one where we won. Uh, Luar Luar got a hat-trick at home in a real big... That was sort of a, a relegation um, battle as well then between us and Southampton. We're both, in, both involved in it, Portsmouth and Southampton. So, um, yeah, some some good fixtures. Um, and of course, yeah, we've had some good games with them as well since I've, since we've been at Bournemouth. We've, we've not managed to come out on top, I don't think, since I've been here yet. But, um, yeah, we, we try and change that on Thursday. Obviously, you refer to that game back in 2005, April. It was the end of April, a relegation match between Portsmouth and Southampton. Obviously, you were at Pompey at, at the time. That was a 4-1 victory. Are you hoping, you can see where I'm going with this, are you hoping that you can go to St Mary's and perhaps inflict a, a big blow on their chances of Premier League survival whilst keeping Bournemouth in the Premier League? No, yeah, no, no. Yeah, no feeling towards what it does to them uh, at all. Um, just purely us and what it means to us. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't get any pleasure out of any more pleasure out of beating Southampton than I will out of beating anybody else. So, yeah, hopefully we can go there, put another big result on the board for for ourselves, the, the club, the players, the fans. Um, yeah, and if we do that, we're, we'll be in a really good place. And just finally, for me, some some team news, some injury news. I know. You've got a lot of strength in depth at the moment. You've got good players that can't even get on the bench. What's the, the latest? Who's back? Who's a doubt? And... So, um, yeah, who's back? No, we're, we're still good. Joe Rothwell had a sort of mild hamstring at half-time on, um, on Sunday, um, but he's feeling better, so we're hopeful that he'll be in the matchday squad. Um, yeah, and the rest are pretty good. Junior Trey already not back yet, but hopefully won't be too much longer. Um, yeah, and the rest are the rest are okay. Obviously, a free game week for us in yeah, so it we we, we may have to freshen things up here and there and um, move a few things around. But um, yeah, two big games in quick succession, so the, the the big squad will definitely be needed. Thank you, Gary Francis Bernal. You'll probably be there at the game on Thursday. Club ambassador, you can have a word. I've I've spoken to him before. I think we did some TV stuff together, and uh, he doesn't actually remember it. I don't think, um, but it definitely happened. Um, so yeah, yeah. I'll, if I bump into him, I'll mention it again. Does that kind of guarantee you a bit of a hostile reception from their fans? Do you quite like that? Is it a nice to almost take the pressure off your players? Um, oh, yeah, you know, I'd love to take. Yeah, if I if the source of everyone's focus could be on me and let my players go and perform, then yeah, I'd. I'd yeah, that that would be a benefit, but I don't I don't see it like that. I think the the players are used to playing in. I mean, we've had two away games at Tottenham and Leicester recently. Leicester were fired up for it. Home fans knew it was a big game for them, and the lads managed to to put in a performance. And obviously, huge crowd at, at Tottenham um, going one nil down, and the place sort of being bouncing at that point. And the lads managed to to put in another real good performance. So um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what sort of reception I'll get, and yeah, it doesn't doesn't bother me too much either way. You've said Southampton have improved under Ruben Sellers. Can you know exactly what he's going through? Because you're both in a relegation fight in your first managerial job in the Premier League. Yeah, I think, yeah, I can imagine. Um, obviously, because I'm, yeah, but it doesn't mean that he's dealing with it or um, doing things similar to, it, uh, similar to what I do. I think, yeah, all, all managers will be unique. But, yeah, I would guess there's... Not too many managers that go straight into their um, or head coaches that go into their first job in a Premier League relegation battle. So, yeah, similarities that we're both thrown in at a, at a high level and with big stakes. Um, so yeah, it'll be a I'm sure it'll be a hard fought game. No, Jack Stevens available to you for this game. How much of an impact has he had for you here? Yeah, he's had some real good performances. He's brought sort of a a real good organisation to us at times. Um, He's very vocal, um, has brought a calmness. So, yeah, performed very, very well since he's been in. Um, but, yeah, like I say, luckily we have a, we have almost a fully fit squad that, um, yeah, that we can we can replace him with on, on Thursday. Bill Foley's here for the week. Have you been able to have some 
good meetings, some time together. I know obviously you've got three games in a week, so it's busy for you. Uh, yeah, seen seen Bill around the, the training ground, and yeah, had a couple of brief chats with him. But um, yeah, a lot of my time in three game weeks is um, yeah, there's uh, yeah, it doesn't never feels like you have enough time. So um, busy working and, and trying to make sure the team are ready, which I'm I'm sure Bill would would prefer me to do. What's his message? His kind of belief? Do you think, or is he quite hands off? Does he not really get too involved with you know, like you say, the day to day? Oh, I think he. He'll, he'll be speaking to to Richard and and Neil regularly. I would I would think. Um, obviously, from my point of view, I'm just head down, getting on with the work that needs to be done. So, um, yeah, no, I don't. Uh, yeah, I think he, he he wants to be involved. He, he wants to know what's going on. He he's yeah he's keen to to help and improve the club. So, um, but yeah, from my point of view, it's more contact purely with with Richard or or the players that. That, that is my important bit at the moment, making sure that everybody's ready to go for, for what is going to be six real big games for the football club. So take care of my bit and um, I'm sure everyone else will be happy. Uh, last couple, if you don't mind. Um, you said balls in the box and counter-attacks you were frustrated with against West Ham. Are you expecting a different contest, a different kind of team on Thursday night? Southampton are very different to West Ham, yeah. Um, but yeah I was disappointed with... Um, the fact that we struggled to deal with a clear and obvious West Ham strength. Um, but yeah, Southampton will be different. They, they, they are a big counter-attack threat still. Um, but yeah, they're a, they, are, they are a very different side to the one we faced on, on Sunday against West Ham. Um, when you're preparing for these latter games, and there, there might be times in, in matches where you, you, you're chasing a winner, you're, you're chasing an equaliser for what it means to survival. Have you discussed little things like whether the keeper goes up for a corner in the last minute, you know, when things are really coming to the wire? Have you really sort of, it sounds like you've put every hour into the office, so are you kind of dealing with all the minutiae like that? Yeah, I don't don't feel like we're at that point of the season yet. I think, of course, when you get, yeah, I mean, if let's say you're facing a game that you have to win to qualify for Europe or you have to win to stay up and you're drawing 1-1 and there's 20 minutes to go your substitutions are going to be very different to if you were drawing 1-1 in January with 20 minutes to go so yeah of course there will be there's things that I have in my mind but um, my preference would to be take care of our business now um, as soon as we can get over the line um, make sure we secure Premier League status for next season and then um, yeah then we won't be so forced into making situational substitutions like you yeah, like you mentioned.